Welcome back. I'm here in a fascinating place with one of the oldest living organisms on this planet. A tree that in some way or another has lived almost 9,500 years. 7,500 BC. That is before the Romans, before Cleopatra and before writing. The first tree from this ancient organism sprouted in the early Neolithic period when humans were still transitioning between being hunter-gatherers and building their first temporary settlements. That is how old we estimate it to be, which is mind-boggling. So the first question, naturally, is how has it managed to live for so long? Well, like any good question, it's complicated. So let's start by getting some background on this species. Our little tree is called Old Rasmus, named after one of the dogs that belonged to the researcher that first discovered it. I will not be sharing its location as it's not made public to avoid the crazy trophy hunter types, but I can tell you that I found it by performing some elaborate trigonometry with existing photos and their backgrounds, and by hijacking a pleasant 16 km hike I was doing with my girlfriend into a 27 km ordeal that ended at midnight. So if you want to find it, you can, but please be respectful and be prepared for some serious hiking. Old Rasmus is a Norway spruce, or Picea abis, which has quite a wide natural range in Europe. And at Mossy Earth we are also quite familiar with it, as we plant these trees in their thousands, in their natural range in the southern Carpathian mountains, to help restore clear lands. There are a couple of theories out there on how Old Rasmus can live so long. One of them is that after the trunk of the tree dies, a new one can simply sprout from the existing root system, which stays alive. This allows the organism to perpetuate its existence and makes it very resilient to natural disasters as it can simply pop back up as a new tree. The other theory is quite specific to our little old Rasmus. It describes a process called clonal layering. Essentially, each winter the heavy snows press the lower branches of the tree into the ground, where they take root and survive to grow again the next year. This process can repeat itself multiple times and provide an additional failsafe for the organism and its clones to keep on living. Finally, it also has one more card up its sleeve. During long time periods of climactically unfavorable conditions, it can survive as a low growing shrub known as a Krumholz, which is a perfect adjustment to exceptionally heavy winter snowfall. But how do we know all of this? We owe this valuable knowledge to a study carried out by Leif Kuhlmann and Lisa Oven, two Swedish researchers. Their study used a process called carbon dating to estimate the age of the root system of the tree and ultimately provide a decent estimate for when it first came into this world. The results provide strong support to the old wisdom that some of these spruces may have an eternal life, provided that they don't suffer from physical catastrophes, such as fire, pathogens, insect attacks, or more likely, man-made destruction. So while it is questionable that this tree is actually 9,500 years old, because of course it's not, it's the same genetic individual, which still makes it amazing. Like Nature is so fascinating, and that's why we love these stories, and that's why we love to explore all the different little things that nature has to offer, and why we work so hard to try and protect it.